never promise savings. So <clears throat> I've covered this uh, just a minute before. Get away from the savings specific value as fast as you can. This is not sales when you're just going one number higher than the next, one number lower than this one. This is just math. You're a mathematician, you're not a salesperson. Get away from it. Even if you have one to one net metering, stop selling off of savings. It's getting ridiculous, right? And you're setting yourself up for failure very, very soon when net metering starts getting killed. Never promise a customer's power bill will be zero or you'll never get another bill. You'll never get another bill, Mr. Customer. Uh, you cannot control this and it will lead to customer dissatisfaction. So when you're selling solar as a tool, especially when you don't have one-to-one -one net metering, this is absolutely fundamental. Uh, you, cannot, uh, you cannot promise savings. Uh, and, and I would strongly suggest to get away from savings in general when selling solar. But as a tool, you can't, you can't control how they use that tool, right? That's, that's what the killing of net metering does. It puts the responsibility back on the customer to actually use it. As a salesperson, you can't control that, but you can guide them. But don't uh, guarantee them any amount of savings. Give them, you can give them a range. You can show them this is what it could look like if you use this system properly. If you weigh your self-consumption during production hours, you can give that, but always back it up with, you know, I, I, I don't control how you use your power, Mr. Customer. If you run your dishwasher, my line, I've said this a few times in the webinar already, my famous line was, John Mary, if you run your dishwasher at 1 a.m. in the morning like a monkey, I can't help you, right? So um, let's keep going here. Numero dos, non-savings value weighting. Okay, so now we know to not focus on savings. Let's start weighting our presentations and the value that solar brings to things other than savings. So the average solar pro sells off of savings alone. Then ain't this the truth? 99% of you out there are just, this number is greater than the next. The elites, those 70, 80, 90% closers are not selling off of this number is greater than the next. This, maybe some of them, that's all they need to do for those layup deals. Um, but they certainly are not skipping past the point of all those additional value adds um, in uh, that value the, that gives us that value that solar gives to customers. And when you do sell solar as a tool, it opens up just a massive amount, as I've talked about, of opportunity to shine light on the true uh, value of solar. Talked about what a few of those are. Um, talked about that a ton in other training sessions. That non-tangible value, that non-savings value that really gets people excited. And I'm challenging a lot of people as well now to actually just use the savings as like a cherry on top of the cake. Just at the very end of the close, at the very end of the close, then mention the savings, right? Then mention the numbers lower than the other. I challenge everyone out there to start doing that. Number three, self-consumption education. So I've gone into what that looks like. And you can get creative with this, you know, make your own use of schedules or whatever. But when it comes to the actual education and showing customers exactly what self-education looks like, um, just giving them that, that uh, picture of your system producing at a certain time, you use energy at that time, you're not relying on these crazy buyback programs or rates that these utility companies are charging you. And again, our famous line in Australia would be then the, the feed-in tariff, as it's called in Australia, it doesn't matter what that is, that's just the cherry on top of the cake. If you use your system properly here, if you weight your self-consumption as much as possible to your, your production hours, uh, you're going to be in the green here. But again, it is up to you. Right? That self-consumption is key. Educate your customers on what that looks like. Your customers must understand the difference in order to properly utilize the system. Uh, create usage schedules if you'd like. You can get creative with that for your customer or at least them, give them the education to do it themselves. Uh, they will feel supported and have a clear path to freedom as opposed to just, yeah, you get installed, your bill drops. <clears throat> now you're actually explaining how it drops and how they uh, utilize and optimize your solar system and what that's going to look like in, in when it comes to the, uh, the numbers. And explaining self-consumption to your customers alone will separate you from 99% of solar pros out there who are too afraid to. Now, I want to be very clear here. Uh, I'm I'm on the far end of the spectrum, very, very counter what a lot of uh, solar trainers or gurus in the U.S. industry say. I don't believe that product knowledge uh, gets more sales. I just don't. Ten years in this game, I've seen who closed at elite levels. I've seen who closed at low levels. The people that closed at elite levels don't really know how solar works. You give them systems to design the system properly and save the customers money, they sell. The people that are technical, they're either engineering or on the roof. They're not good at sales. So that's just my take, hot take. However, however, when it comes to educating your customers uh, on certain things that a vast majority of solar sales guys aren't, in, a, in, a, 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 in order to separate and differentiate yourself from your sales competition, I'm all for that. I'm all for that. 
Now, that could mean education on photovoltaic technology. But I don't, I, I, yeah, I don't really want to go down that route. This, however, is a great uh, uh, example of this, right? How many people out there are explaining to customers self-consumption, production arcs, uh, when to use their power, giving them usage schedules? Nada in the U.S. industry. A ton in Europe and Australia that have been doing this for a long time. None in the U.S. But when you do this to a customer who's heard the same magic pill spiel for the, for the past year or two getting quotes, and all of a sudden you come in and give them a bit more information on how this actually works, educating them on self-consumption, then I will, I will say, okay, yes, that additional information is going to be beneficial for you in the sale. I'll, I'll say it there. But it's true, right? Um, because this is such a different concept and a way of looking at solar and framing it to your customers, if you're watching this webinar right now, you're probably already going to be in the 1%. Um, and you will be in the 1% or less than the 1%. A vast majority of sales guys out there don't even think, they, it doesn't even cross their bloody mind that a solar system could be used properly or improperly. Obviously, because everyone's uh, response uh, to the whole California NEM uh, 3.0 thing is just put batteries on. They're not even thinking about their customer being able to use their system properly. They're just thinking, I'll just do more for them. I'll just give them another magic pill, a band-aid. I'll just give them one battery to solve the problem, right? This is not, it's, it's not realistic. So being able to give that information, educating them on their self-consumption, how to actually use their, their system, giving usage schedules will differentiate you. Yes, it's against uh, you know the keep it simple, stupid thing. But in this one scenario, this one opportunity, I think I'd give it a green flag. Number four. Let's keep rocking here. Uh, direct personal responsibility. I've covered this a ton. Just hammering it home for you right now. Customers want something. Humans want to work on something. <clears throat> Selling the magic pill does not do that for them. It doesn't fill that hole, doesn't fill that gap. Um, it doesn't fill that natural desire to have control over the life. But putting the responsibility back onto the customer, giving them structure, telling them how to actually optimize their system, optimize the tool in front of them, um, benefits not only the uh, the customer, right, and, and making them the sale and uh, making them feel it's more legitimate, uh, it's more valid because they have to put a bit of work in, right? Uh, as I've noted here, nothing, nothing good is free. Nothing good is magic. It, nothing good is easy. They have to put a bit of work in. That is how. That is reality. That is what they're used to, right? They're they're not used to people slapping something on their property or giving them something that's ultra valuable and not asking anything in return, right? Any work or anything in return. So the second you start coming in and say, yeah, you got to do a bit of work, but it has amazing opportunity, much more valid. It, it, it makes sense in their, their scale of value, right? Everyone in their head has a scale of value. So their whole life, they've had this scale and they've put certain things on and they've seen it go up or down, right? And so they have this, this, this statistical model of data of if someone comes in and puts too much value on the scale and they say it's really valuable, uh, but they'll be thinking, well, no, that doesn't really make sense because what I have to offer you is not that valuable. So you're trying to screw me here. But the second you go, hey, it's not too good to be true. It's not a magic pill. You actually have to put some work in. But if you do, it's going to have some amazing results from you. Their internal scale of value is like, okay, that seems fair. That seems balanced. That seems valid, right? So it's something to unlock. Uh, but also it's, it, it's beneficial to you as well, right? Um, and a vast majority of solar pros feel that it is not uh, if it's not easy and uh, automated, customers don't want it. When in actuality, it's horribly untrue and it is an amazing way to differentiate yourself. Direct and personal responsibility. Put it back on the customer. Give them a project. Give them some work. Give them some homework. They like it. It's not a negative. Give them something to do. Balance that scale of value in their heads. Okay. And finally, last but not least, you got to change your mindset. Because I know a lot of people out there watching right now, live replays, you still have it in your mind what solar is and the value that it gives to people. And I know a ton of people, the second NEM 2.0 to 3.0 kicks off <coughs> and kicked out. You're, I, we of course saw it all over. You know, solar is dead. Solar is ruined. There's no point going in solar. The industry is dying out because your value your subjective value of what how solar was valuable is that it had to be magic pill. And so you have not been able to figure out a way to actually present that value, the other value to your customers, right? That is amateur hour, absolute amateur hour. So if you haven't tried this yet and you haven't tried selling solar as a tool, you have to start with yourself. 
because if you don't think the value of solar is there anymore without net metering um, or with just going by numbers, then there's no way you're going to be able to frame and present the value of solar to your customers. You're not going to be able to hide it. They're going to be able to pick up on that. You have to solve that problem for yourself. You have to change that mindset for yourself as well. If you think solar must be a one-to-one -one net metered magic pill, your customers will too. Uh, and this mindset is stereotypical for uh, inexperienced solar pros and will be the reason why many solar pros leave the industry far too early when one-to-one one -to -one net metering is affected. And lastly but not leastly, just to motivate you a bit more, I've said this fact many, many times before, but someone else new might need to hear this. Every single solar boom globally has happened when the market has already passed net metering, has already moved past it. Australia was one to three years, one to four years. UK, New Zealand, Europe, Germany. It has happened after the one-to-one. -one. If there is one-to-one -one net metering, feed and tariffs, buyback programs in a market, it is a key indicator that the market is young and immature. The boom, meaning the most solar, has been sold after net metering has been killed. So the question I have for you, as on the screen here, if you can only sell before uh, net metering is killed, and the boom, when the most solar is sold after net metering is killed, and you can't figure out how to sell after net metering is killed, but a majority of people that sell solar are selling it after net metering is killed, wouldn't that mean you're a below average solar sales closer? That's what that would, would mean. The best closers in the world have been born after net metering is killed. They sell solar as a tool, what solar actually is. It is not a magic pill. It is something that you can frame with massive value other than the savings on top of the savings. And it is also something that a customer needs to utilize properly. The magical wizard might stop casting his spell on those hammers. And now you need to explain to this. This is a hammer. This is a tool. You can use it properly. We have this master carpenter to teach you how to do that. We will give you a structure. But at the end of the day, Mr. Customer, if you're on your laundry dishwasher at 1 a.m. like a monkey, I can't help you. That is the way moving forward here. Not just for yourself understanding how solar works, but for your customers. That is how a vast majority of solar will be sold in the U.S. moving forward as net metering is killed. And if you don't catch on to that, you won't be part of that statistic. You will leave. You'll not be able to close. You'll think the industry is dead. Meanwhile, the elites are having the time of their life selling solar like crazy in this upcoming boom that we have when the sales really. You think you've been seeing sales numbers now? <laughs> when the sales really start, that's when we'll see who the elites of the elites are. And they will be using these methodologies. They will not be selling it as a magic tool, a uh, magic pill. They'll be selling it as a tool. Cool. And that is selling solar like a tool.